Ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten, but certainly not by me. Caliphite Defenders, welcome to the channel and welcome to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be doing another update style video on a DPS guide I made in the past, or just guide in general that I've made before. And today we are updating the melee DPS guide that I made about two to three months ago. The new items that were added into the game are enchantments for the champion's ring and for the gloves of passage so we'll be taking a look at those and discussing what those do as well as new tier 95 melee armor or glass cannon armor as it's kind of been dubbed the vestments armor i'll go ahead and in this video explain each of those uh what they do and kind of how they fit into the overall ecosystem of melee and kind of how it all blends in together and whatnot and i'll go ahead and be giving some Example ability rotations, uh, mostly with Berserk, uh, with with and without a pot, kind of what I would do in those situations, where and not I'm, where and when I would add in length spec and whatnot, and kind of talk about what I've been finding so far with this uh, armor set and whatnot, and just anything kind of in general. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into these new items. So to start out with, the Champion's Ring got a buff in the form of a ch enchantment. These enchantments, once you unlock them, they're bound to your character. They are not bound to the item. Just like the magic items I went over earlier in the month uh, with that update guide. All enchantments, they're bound to your player, so you don't have to worry about selling or keeping items or whatnot. And all it does is add a, an additional percent for crit chance. And if uh, the target is being bled, you get an additional 1.5% critical strike damage. So you actually do get a physical damage increase if you're critting. Uh, I believe it takes your uh, the max range or takes the max end of the range of crits. So like the min and max value kind of like within that bar at the top end. I think it extends that or extends the... I'm not sure exactly how it works, but... Overall, it's a 1.5% damage increase for crits. Now, the difficult thing about this is getting targets to bleed while in Berserk, where you're most likely going to see this uh, getting used or being the most useful, being that's when you're going to see the most damage increase because that's probably when you're going to be critting the most often. That's when all your hits go out. That's when all your assaults and destroys and everything else is critting and whatnot. And the difficult part is getting a bleed off during that time period because Blood Assault or Destroy or Frenzy or Flurry, whatever ability you choose, that does not actually count as a bleed to trigger the Champion's Ring. So honestly, the only place I see this ring ever really getting used is where you struggle with accuracy. Now I understand there are, or there were talks a while ago about using Dismember in Zerk. And I've seen a couple examples of that still being the case, but honestly, I'm not fully sure. I know it has something to do with the whip spec and getting more of the uh, parasite stacks out with dismember in Zerk, and it's technically more damage or something like that. However, I'm not focusing on uh, whip specific things today. This is mostly just about the items that came into game, and I'll kind of give further thoughts on that in the further in the video. Overall, the only place I have used this ring so far is Raksha, and it's pretty nice there for the accuracy, considering that I like to use DBA at the Adrenaline Crystal. So if you're having some accuracy issues at a boss, uh, give this ring a shot, let me know what you think, and we're going to move on to the next item. The Gloves of Passage, or Enhanced Gloves of Passage, whichever you have, these also got a buff in the form of an enchantment that are basically just furthering the numbers and effects that the gloves already did. The first effect being that when you used the uh, ability Havoc or Smash, you would deal 10% extra damage, and you had a 6 second time window to activate or to take advantage of that per se, and the enchantment just gave you a further 6% damage, so you now get a 16% damage increase on your next ability. Now, there is a caveat with this. This only works on, like, the first hit of a channeled, so only the first hit of your assault, assault, destroy, or flurry, and I believe it only works on one hit of hurricanes, so typically for those abilities, I will G-Fury... Over, I will G-Fury for Hurricane, even though it kind of does the same thing, instead of Havoc, just for the uh, crit chance, and, or the guaranteed crit per se, for more consistent damage and whatnot. And the bleed effect that the Gloves of Passage have, so when you used uh, Havoc or Smash, 
uh, you, any bleeds on the target or any bleeds you cast after that within its time window would get 10% uh, extra damage and this now is increased by a further 5% so 15% extra damage for free just by using Havoc. Now Havoc is a 157 uh, percent ability it is not a 188 but with all of these effects uh, swapping to these gloves if you're also taking advantage of cinder banes or if you're at a boss that doesn't allow weapon poison these are for sure a guaranteed like best in slot glove like these are best in slot for melee besides something like cinder banes but most people are switching to these from what i see and honestly these are the most fun to use now both the champion's ring and these Gloves of Passage, you have to have them equipped for 9 seconds before the uh, effects take place. So, uh, you might have to... You're not going to get the effects of the enchantment for um, swapping between these and Cinders. But it's still worth it regardless to swap because you're getting an extra 10% damage on your bleed. So, when you're doing uh, an easy K rotation, you know, in between your Zerks, it's still worthwhile to... Uh, use these gloves as a swap regardless however if you're just camping them like for instance uh, at Raksha specifically uh, you're going to get the extra damage on both accounts and it's going to be very very nice for you last but certainly not least is the vestments armor set this is the uh, fabled glass cannon armor set uh, kind of brings us back to the old days of using void at places that was certainly glass cannon or paper armor Whatever people wanted to call it back then. This is no different. It is a tier 95 class armor That has uh, tier 100 damage values. However, it is only tier 70 defense So you're basically wearing bandos that can do a lot more damage um, It has a set effect that uh, works at two three and four armor pieces You know the more armor pieces you add the more set effects you get the first set effect is uh, Getting additional adrenaline over a set period of time uh, When activating an ultimate ability so if you activate a zerk you will get 15% uh, adrenaline over an 18 second period during that berserk and should during this time you get off another ultimate ability uh, you'll instantly regenerate 20% adrenaline so I try to leave this for the more tail end of the uh, time frame so closer to the 18 second cutoff I will try it just so you get the most adrenaline out of the set as possible but if you activate it beforehand, it's not too big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. The set bonus when you bump it up to three pieces is simply extending Berserk's uh, duration by six seconds. So it goes from a 20 second to a 26 second Berserk. Uh, this is kind of reminiscent of when Planted Feet was bugged and worked for Zerk. And we had a 24 second Zerk and it was the most overpowered thing back then. It was amazing. We all loved it. And then it was ripped away from us way too soon. However, it is now back and better than ever because it's now just an effective armor set. And we get an additional, uh, I believe it's 2.4 seconds on a Zerk compared to back then. So the more Zerk time we have, the better. And this allows for quite some fun rotations that I will be going over further on in the video and the last set effect when you have all four pieces the helm the body the boots and the legs you have all of them equipped then your maximum adrenaline is increased by 20 percent so instead of setting at 100 percent normally you can set at 120 percent and you are off to the races with some really nasty berserk rotations overall this armor works really well in a lot of different places i've tested it at ed3 I've tested it at Raksha, I've tested it at Karapak a little bit in the hybrid form, and I've been to a few other kind of lower tier places. There aren't too many places I don't see this not being useful at. Uh, the only one that comes to mind where you're still going to want TMW over vestments is probably high in Rage Talos, like 2449 claims or 4k claims. I don't see this being used there just because the damage is a bit too much and you are relying on TMW saving you. However, this is pretty much the new kit on the block and I will say it is kind of odd to see it just be a new armor set in game to basically unlock melee and kind of forget everything about TMW, but this is the direction the game is going to go, and these are the items that are in-game as of right now. 
which is uh, August of 2022. So we'll see what the future holds. We'll see how this holds up to future updates and how things change, but this is the armor set we have, and it is a welcomed addition to Melee. Overall, this armor set really opens up Melee and brings it into a realm of its own, being that Melee was very adrenaline-restricted before this update, and with this armor set mostly focusing on giving adrenaline, plus things like Jaws of the Abyss already being in-game as a swap for bleeds giving adrenaline on basic abilities, Melee is now a very, very free combat style, and it is a lot of fun to use, and it is really good at a lot of places. It really just, it was the one thing that Melee honestly needed. Now, I might make a video in the future on some changes I'd like to see to Melee and kind of open up a discussion then. If you'd like to see a video like that, leave it in the comments below. However, we're going to move into some of the new rotations that I've come up with and have probably been come up with by a bunch of other people. You know, these are just the ones I thought of, just kind of sitting at combat dummies. So let's go ahead and get into those rotations. Real quick though, I completely forgot about the Chaos War Ability Codex. Uh, it is probably the most important thing for Melee as well, and it is also the most simple. Being that it is a basic ability that does 20 to 130% ability damage, however, uh, it increases the base ability damage of your next Melee ability to hit uh, by 100%, and it's a 7.2 second window for you to get that ability off. So uh, what this does work with is it works with bleeds, specifically it works with easy K spec, effectively doubling the damage of easy K spec. So it has made it very strong and very worthwhile to use. And you can use it on other things. There are other uh, niche uses for it. I've seen in speed kills where people stall chaos roar or they use Chaos for, and then they stall like a Hurricane or an Overpower or something like that that they really need to hit in some uh, ex more extravagant like trick shot speed kills. And I've also seen Overpower used to hit like, I think it's 65k damage at Zamorak in one foul swoop on the uh, red or gray bar. So there are some niche use cases for it. Uh, especially with hybrid being a thing, I'm sure it's going to work its way into doubling some abilities there. So we'll see what the metas come. But for melee camp, if you're, all you're using is melee and you have easy K for sure, use it for your easy K spec. Whether it's in an EOF or not, it should be in an EOF for the additional 50% uh, duration. That's when it really, really cranks to life. However, use whatever you have and Chaos Roar is a definite buy. By the way, it's really cheap. I think it's only 84 mil or so, so definitely pick one up while you can. Alrighty, so moving into the rotations that I have been using at bosses in general with melee, uh, using the new vestments armor and whatnot. So I'm just going to speak kind of at large and kind of a general sense right now, and then uh, in the time codes, there will be the specific rotations that I use. However, I just wanted to talk real quickly about the kind of the overall idea of what I'm doing here. So... Traditionally, with melee, you have Zerk, uh, wherever it is on my part. There it is. <laughs> you have a Zerk every minute, and now it lasts 26 seconds instead of 20 seconds. So I use that as a way to get off two hurricanes, uh, an assault, a destroy, an overpower, and possibly a two or three hit flurry, as well as uh, some basics and whatnot to keep adrenaline management going. And in between Berserks, I've been using just an easy K spec. I've been just using the EOF easy K, and I have this easy K here just for cleave swapping and some other basic abilities, and that's about it. So I haven't been bothering with ZGS all too much, simply because I haven't really found a need to bring it. At the, the couple places I've used it is... I've used a melee at ED3, and I've used it at Raksha, and I did a couple ED1 uh, runs as well with it, just kind of testing it around, although ED1 was pretty painful. And what I found so far is that doing an easy K rotation in between the two Zerks, with the adrenaline you're getting from all of the bleeds that melee has to offer, uh, and combined with the Jaws of the Abyss, you get so much adrenaline where... If you want to, you can use a Meteor Strike during your EZK rotation, 
and then have a little bit of that crit buff during your Zerk coming up to then allowing yourself to get off a couple D claws. Usually I get one, sometimes two off during uh, a Zerk on average. At places like Raksha where I'm just supercharged with uh, the uh, Shadow Anima and whatnot being that my, you know, potential max hit with all that damage increase goes up so I'm more likely to see, you know, bigger hits and whatnot. Uh, usually I can get off three there if I'm lucky, or if, you know, I'm just critting out of my mind for some reason, I get three. But typically I can get two D-Claw EOFs, as well as, you know, an Assault, a Destroy, an Overpower, and a Hurricane. Usually if I'm going for D-Claws, I don't go for the second Hurricane, although in... A hypothetical situation, I would definitely say go for the second hurricane. It's always worthwhile to go for it because, you know, two hurricanes is better than one. And being that we have a 26 second Zerk, you can always fit in two of them. So that's just kind of what I've been playing with before. I have also played with uh, Bleeding Frenzy as an ultimate. However, I've noticed that when you use the second ultimate, so... For the set effect, uh, when you have two pieces, you know, you get 15% adrenaline over 18 seconds. Uh, obviously, Berserk counts as an ultimate there, so you start getting that uh, trickle feed of adrenaline. However, if you use a second ultimate, it doesn't start the 15-second uh, uh, thing over again while giving you the 20%. It, count, it just gives you the instant 20%, so the ultimate just basically costs 20% less. So... You can't really stack a bunch of ultimates in a row without being super adren starved. So it's something that I've kind of played with, but honestly, I don't think it's really worthwhile. Plus, I don't think Frenzy is really worthwhile as a bleed in the first place, being that it's not exactly that much stronger than, say, a Blood Assault or even a Blood Destroy. Also, one more thing I wanted to discuss real quick is the usage of Lang Spec. Now that we have a bunch of extra adrenaline, and Vigor Passive is always there and whatnot, and there's a lot of ways to save a Dren. Uh, the thing I was playing with was Lang Specking before Zerk to see if it's actually worthwhile or not. And to be honest, I didn't notice whole, a whole lot of difference between uh, Zerks, whether I was not Lang Specking and going for like a perfect rotation, or if I would sacrifice the extra Hurricane for a Lang spec in the beginning to then get a potential extra damage on overpower. So all the Zerks I've tested, which was, you know, a pot with uh, Lang spec start or Lang spec before just before or no Lang spec. And then I did it without a pot. I tested both of those and the numbers seem to be relatively close together anywhere from 180k or 170k on the low end for a Zerk, uh, damage-wise, uh, up to 220k on the high end. And the 220ks I only really noticed on the A-pot Zerks. I didn't really notice any of the non-A-pot Zerks going that high. And honestly, I think that's more up to crit RNG over anything. I tested those Zerks. By the way, those Zerks were no DBA, uh, just using tier 95 weapons. And I was not using whip or anything like that. I did have my grim active just to kind of simulate, you know, combat. There was no aura. And I had my tier 99 prayer on. So those are the numbers I'm getting. But honestly, I'm not exactly sure. I would say if you're forced away from a boss in any scenario, Lang is always worthwhile to do in advance. So say uh, ambassador during the uh, Roomba phase or you're kind of running around the room killing all the little uh, Roomba spinner things. I would go ahead and do like a DBA, a Natty, maybe get a Meteor off your Lang spec, you know, do all those uh, kind of pre-build things before. And also most bosses, you're able to do a Lang spec at the Adrenaline Crystal. And then by the time you run in, most it'll be there for, you know, most of your hard hitting abilities and kind of the beginning of your Zerk. Mostly overpower is where you really notice it, where overpower can easily hit, you know, the 19.5s or the 20.4s, depending on if it is smoke clouded, your target is uh, smoke clouded or not. And I would say anytime you're forced away from a boss, it's worthwhile to use. However, if you're doing a straight rotation on a boss, it's a toss up. Uh, if you want to sacrifice the additional hurricane for your overpower going, you know, berserk mode, 
feel free to go for it. Um, I haven't noticed too much of a difference there. However, if you have any uh, numbers that you want to throw up in the comments, let me know. Or if you want to throw any insight in there from testing you've done, let me know in the comments. Alrighty, so starting off with a non-APOT Zerk and what I typically like to do now. So I'll go ahead and start with a Zerk, obviously. PC Barge, I like to freedom main hand 2H auto here, get off the Hurricane and go ahead and bleed Assault. And then I like to build up so I can overpower. And then I go ahead and go for a destroy. Let that play out. Decimate. Cleave. And I'll go for a two-hit flurry here. Fury. And finish off with a hurricane. And that's typically what I like to do for an A-Pod Zerk. I think I had some extra damage already on my counter, so 232k is a little bit high, especially for no length spec. This is also assuming no length spec. Uh, if you length spec before, the rotations are going to be the same, or if you want to length spec during, you know, uh, you can just cut out the second hurricane. Because what you can do here uh, with, uh, length sp or with the armor set is when you have adrenaline... Let's get to a max adrenaline here real quick. You're at 120, so what you can do at the start if you really want to, and this is what I was kind of talking about earlier, is you can hit Lang spec, and then Zerk and go instantly into it. So that is an option there, and I haven't noticed too much of a difference between Lang specking just before Zerk as your stall, or your uh, you know three ticks to uh, three ticks of clearance before Zerk, so you can get your barge off. And without it, like pre uh, lang specking, I haven't noticed too much of a difference there, but I uh, just wanted to throw that in there real quick. Alrighty, and for the APOT Zerk, what I like to do is roughly the same rotation as the non APOT Zerk. However, I have APOT, so you have more freedom and you usually can get an extra hit of Flurry off. So go ahead and do that real quick. Go ahead and Zerk. Hit the APOT, roughly same tick. Barge. I like to free the main hand just for the adrenaline. Hurricane, bleed the assault and instantly into a destroy. What's nice about APOT is you can assault destroy and then immediately go for your overpower, whereas the non APOT you kind of have to overpower early. And here I'll go for a three hit or a five tick. Basic, basic, and then her finish off with a hurricane. And that's typically what I do. Um, sometimes what I'll what I'll do with the APOT Zerk instead is I'll go for Hurricane, then I'll do the Freedom Main Hand 2H. Uh, typically, I reserve Freedom Main Hand 2H for non-APOT, although I have noticed it is pretty good inside of Zerk, and you can get uh, quite a few, like, quite a good hit from the uh, 2H auto. Sometimes it'll hit, like, a 8 or a 10k. So it is something to consider, although you can only really use free, uh, Freedom Main Hand 2H off if you're at a boss where you don't really need freedom or, you know, you're not using it for any uh, stun releases or anything like that. So uh, if you can't use freedom at the boss you're at uh, because of some mechanic or something, then you can just replace it with a basic on the APOT. On the non-APOT Zerk, I would say uh, be careful because you do need an impatient proc at that point to use Hurricane second and then Bleed Assault. But um, just kind of play these rotations by ear, but these are in general what I do. So last but not least, I wanted to go ahead and showcase a longer rotation, kind of showing what I was doing uh, with my EZK in between two Zerks. So for this specific example, I'm going to start with a non-APOT Zerk, do an EZK rotation, and then save APOT for the uh, kind of all-out nutso Berserk with a couple D-claws if I can fit it in. We'll see what crit chance I get. But uh, nonetheless, I also reset the damage timer and, or the damage counter just to see what it shows up as. And this is under T99 Prayer, T95 Weapons, no uh, whip or anything special, and a Grim. So we'll go ahead and length spec here. Go ahead and Zerk. TC Barge. Freedom Main Hand 2H. Hurricane into a Blood Assault. Go ahead and basic, do another basic, and get my overpower off. And we'll go ahead and hit G Fury just to get an extra chance on the destroy. Basic number one, two, three, and then I'll hit my hurricane. Do a Desi. Cleave, preemptively put on the helm. Chaos Roar. 
easy K and start an easy K rotation. Get off as many bleeds as I can. And I'm going to build up here for a meteor strike. Do another boost member so EZK is heading even more. And then I go ahead and build up here till I'm at 100. And then I hit Lang spec, basic, walk away, anticipate, Zerk, barge, basic, second basic. And then I go ahead and bleed assault. And we'll hit Overpower. Maybe a D-Claw. Got a decent amount of Adren there. Another D-Claw. This is usually what I do at the end of a boss. And I'll go ahead and hit Hurricane. Into a Destroy. So I managed to get two D-Claws off there. And then I guess that would in theory be the end of a boss fight. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the optimal usage of a D-Claw EOF. And also, this does not assume, you know, being Calged, like if you're with a buddy or something, or if you're running a Calg Demon yourself. Um, I, it doesn't include any of that. And also, this damage number obviously doesn't include using a Zerk Aura. So, it's just kind of a test rotation I've been using for a while. And as the main principle I've been using, or kind of like the overarching idea I was using at Raksha, to get anywhere in the... Uh, you're from like the 215 to 235, 240 range for kill times, and this is roughly what I've been using. So let me know what you think down below. Let me know what you guys have been doing and what rotations you've been using. And we'll go ahead and roll that outro. Ladies, gentlemen, and I did not forget about you Caliphate Defenders. Thank you very much for watching. If you have anything to say or comments about this video, please put them down in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing as it helps out a lot and you'll be notified for when future guides go live. Anyways, I am Car Guy. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, nighttime, whatever it is, wherever you are, and I will see you next time for the next video. Peace.